Well, welcome back. Uh, about three years ago, I published a video that looked very similar to this, uh, detailing exactly how I tie up my hair rigs uh, for carp fishing. And uh, I've been doing it that way ever since, except for last year, I uh, made a change. And I, I didn't tell anybody, I didn't uh, mention it on the videos, I just uh, started doing these hair rigs a little bit differently. And uh, I wanted to I wanted to, to test it out for a good period of time uh, before I mentioned it because I wasn't sure if it was, was going to work. But uh, I used it all season last year of 2022, and uh, I had zero problems. And I'm going to be tying my hair rigs like this from here on out. So I just wanted to give you an update uh, of how I'm tying my hair rigs, and uh, I don't know, maybe you'll find it useful or interesting. Uh, maybe something you might want to use with your fishing. So on my hair rigs, I like the hair to come off the shank of the hook real low down here, down uh, a little bit even slightly below the hook point. Uh, and the main purpose for that is is because this right here, this hook point, that's the part that is the most important part of the hook. That's the part that catches on the fish's lip. And I want my bait, which is going to be on here, to be as close as possible to this. Because I want this part of the hook in the fish's mouth, not this part. So if I have my hair rig coming off over here and a fish comes from this direction and you know sucks up the bait, it's going to be pulling the hook this end first into its mouth. I don't want that. I want this end to go into the hook uh, to the fish's mouth. So that's why I'm sure it's debatable as to whether or not it makes a difference, but that's the way I like to do it. And to accomplish that, what I've done in the past, and I'll show you some uh, video footage from my uh, video from three years ago, I used to tie a series of overhand knots uh, along the uh, shank of the hook here and pin the hair uh, to the shank of the hook down here low like this. And so I tie a series of overhand knots, maybe five, six, seven of them in a row right next to each other. And then uh, run the line up and uh, do the regular knotless knot up through the rest, uh, the rest of the rig like most people do. And that worked really great. It really did. Uh, I had no problems with it. Uh, the only thing is, it was kind of time consuming to tie those rigs. To tie uh, overhand knots repeatedly uh, in a series up here. Probably, I don't know, I never, never timed myself, but it took, you know, probably a good five minutes or so to tie each hair rig. And when you, if you don't fish that much, it's probably not a big deal, but if you fish as much as I do, I tie a lot of hair rigs. And uh, so the more time I'm spending at home tying hair rigs, the less time I'm spending uh, doing other more important things. So I, I came up with a different way to tie these that uh, would be a little more efficient uh, and get me get me get me these hair rigs tied up uh, a little quicker uh, and help me to get the rigs tied and get out on the water sooner. So this is a finished one of the of the newer design of the way I do it, and you probably can't see uh, with enough detail. I can't zoom in close enough with this tiny. This is a tiny hook and a tiny line. I can't zoom in close enough to show you the detail on how this line is wrapped here. I'm going to demonstrate one for you. I'm going to tie one right here, and I'll show you exactly how I put this together. Here we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is take some uh, line here. This is the line that I use for my hair eggs. It's 30 pound spider wire braid. And I'm just going to make a loop on one end. Just doing that by folding it over itself like that. And then just tying an overhand knot with both of those strands. Just like that. I'm going to trim that tag end off. So I've got the line with the loop on the end here. So I've got a little uh, fly tying vise here. I'm going to put this hook in. This is a size 4 uh, octopus hook. I'm going to go ahead and put that in the vise. So I'm going to take my line that I just made the loop on the end. I'm going to take the open end and thread it up through the back of that hook eye right there and keep pulling it. I'm going to pull it all the way till I get that loop of suture right there by the uh, or loop of line, excuse me, right right where I want it. And I'll just kind of measure kind of how long I want the hair to be. Obviously that's variable depending on what kind of baits you're going to be using, but let's just say that that's the, length, the hair length that I want. So I'm just going to grab the uh, hair and put, hold it against the vise and just keep that stationary. And next I'm just going to start slowly wrapping this line all the way down the shank of the hook and paying attention to to wrap it neatly not I don't want any of the wraps to go on top of each other 
Um, I don't think it matters that much if they get a wrap or two on top of each other, but I don't know. I go pretty fast on this when I do it, but I'm going to wrap this. It probably takes about 20 wraps to get all the way down. I want to get down so that that line is below the point of the hook. Usually it takes about 20 wraps on this, on the shank length for this hook. And once I get down here where I want to be, then I'm going to start wrapping the line back up towards the eye of the hook, but I'm only going to do that about five or six times. But I've learned through trial and error that it is important to wrap it at least four or five times. If you only do two or three, it will come unraveled. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five wraps on top of that, uh, that spiral of uh, line that I, that I already put onto the shank. Then back up through the eye, through the back. I'm going to pull that tight. And those outer wraps, those last five wraps, are going to cinch tight on top of the first layer of wraps. And basically, that's it. We're done. I'm going to tie a swivel onto this end of the line here. So I make my the way I do my rigs, I need short, short hook lengths. So I only leave about two inches or so, probably about an inch and a half if I can, if I can get away with it. And uh, I, then I'll just tie another loop at the end of that line here. I basically tie it as short as, I, as my fingers will allow me to do it. Trim that tag in. So there's the uh, hair rig with the uh, loop on the end. And to attach the swivel, I just run that uh, loop through one end of the swivel and then go up. And these tiny crochet hooks are handy for this little part. I'm going to go up and over the other end of the swivel there. And cinch. There's the finished hook link with the hair rig with the new method. So compared to my previous hair rig uh, tying method, you know, it accomplished the same task, but just it, I got the task done here uh, in a shorter amount of time. It just takes a lot less time to just do those 20 wraps down the shank of the hook than it does to tie a whole bunch of overhand knots. So as far as I'm concerned, that's uh, how I'm going forward, tying my hair rigs, at least now, for now, in 2023. Who knows, maybe in a year or two I'll uh, change it up again. But I hope you found that interesting and uh, possibly a little useful. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. See you on the next one.